chapter. What I'm going to be sharing is basically what I shared last time. I probably will go into more detail. But what I'm going to share uh, this morning is the ninth month. Say the ninth month. Ninth month. And, and the, this is the ninth month. We're in the month of September. And even as we're in this month of September, September is like New Year's, so to speak, because you've had the, the summertime and you've had cookouts and you've been here, you traveled or whatever you did. Whatever kids were out of school, now the kids going back to school. So now it's time to buckle down and get back to basics. Get back, back with God. Amen? Not that we left him, but you know, I don't know, but I don't think Jermaine was fasting during. I know I wasn't doing too much fasting during the summer, but we picking it up to Wednesday, amen? Tuesday. Tuesday. 21 days of fasting and prayer, amen? I didn't get too many good amen. I guess y'all catch on to later. Amen. Time to get back to seeking the Lord. Amen. Right. So well, I'm going to give you about four things. I probably won't go into deep detail, but four things that the, the number nine means in the Bible. Number about four things that the word uh, nine means. Since we're in the ninth month, since we're in the ninth month. In the ninth month. And number one, the ninth month means to accomplish the divine will. Mm -hmm. Say accomplish, accomplish the divine will. So we want to accomplish the divine will of God yeah. for our lives. Amen. So that's as we're uh, going into our time of fasting, mm -hmm. as we're going back to the to, to our work schedule, our school schedule, and uh, we want to be focused. Say refocus, refocus on pressing into accomplishing the will of God. So I'm going to read for you Matthew the sixth chapter, beginning at verse five. Amen. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation, which we'll read a little different. It says, "Whenever you pray." Be sincere and not like the pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying before others. In the meetings and on the streets, corners. Believe me, they've had, they already received in full their reward. But whenever you pray, say whenever you pray. Whenever you pray. pray. Amen. So that means we should be some praying people. Come on. But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God. That's what he wants. He wants us to be alone with him. And sometimes your innermost chamber may just be you sitting in your car with the door locked mm -hmm. and just talking to God. Yeah. Sometimes your innermost chamber is in the bathroom. Come on, amen, yes, amen. Yes, yes. While you taking a shower, amen. Yes, amen. Just talking to God, amen. Sometimes your innermost chamber is your car right. while yes. you're going to and from work, yes. amen. Yes. So He wants us to be in our innermost chamber and be alone with Father God. So he can talk to you, but also so you can talk to him. Uh -huh. So he can download and release some things to you. But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God. And when you go to be alone with God, leave, leave your, put, your, put your phone away somewhere. Mm, amen, amen, amen. Bring it down. Lord, speak. Amen. Because you soon did chirps or bleeps or whatever. You're you going right. to be trying to find it. <laughs> Y'all not saying. Say, just turn to somebody just say, it's just a distraction. Just a distraction. But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God. Praying to him in secret. You don't have to tell everybody what you're praying for. Amen. Praying to him in secret. And what happened? And your father, who sees all you do, will reward you openly. When you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases. Praying like those who don't know God. I don't want to pray like I don't know God. We need to be praying like we know God. Come on. We don't have to say, oh, thou deepest, holiest, most utmost, highest, goddess yes. of the heavenly realms. <laughs> and our, and our Elis Elizabethan tongues. <laughs> Verse 7 says, when you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases. Say the same thing over and over and over again. Pray like those who don't know God, for they expect God to hear them because of their many words. God's not so moved about your many words. He's moved by the intent of your heart. Amen. He, he's moved by what you're praying. Are you praying, saying, my name is Jimmy, give me, give me, give me? <laughs> or are you praying just coming and loving on God in, in a true sense of worship? Saying, Lord, I just worship you. Lord, if you don't do nothing else, you've done enough. I worship you because you're my God. I worship you, Lord, because in times past, I didn't know how I was coming out, but you just made a way and brought me out. Amen, amen, amen. When I didn't know where I was going to live, you just opened a supernatural door and gave me a place to live. When I didn't know what I was going to drive, you just let things just be hidden on my credit report. Or what. You just moved things out of the way so I can get me a car. You just made a way where there was no way. He's the God that makes ways in the wilderness. 
and rivers in the desert. Y'all not saying nothing. Hallelujah. So when we pray, things happen. When we pray, things change. When you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases praying like those who don't know God. For they expect God to hear them because they're many words. There is no need to imitate them since your father already knows what you need before you ask him. He knows what you need. He does. Amen. Amen. He knows what things we have to do. Even before we ask him, he still wants you to ask. Because the word says, if you ask, yes. it shall be given. Yes. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be opened unto you. So it's saying, verse 9 says, pray like this. Yes. Our father dwelling in the heavenly realms. He dwells in the heaven. He don't dwell down here on earth. He dwells in the heavenly realms. That's why we want God's will to be done on earth as it already is done in heaven. Because yeah. heaven is complete and heaven is perfect. Yeah. This world ain't perfect. Right, come on. Y'all not saying that. You might like it. You might want to stay a long time. I ain't ready to go yet either. But when it's time to shift and it's time to transition, there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely. Amen? Amen. But this world out here is not perfect. This world is not the believer's home. That's right. Amen. So glad. Our Father dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom realm. When we come here on Sundays or Saturdays or whenever we meet, we want God's kingdom, his glory, Veronica, to fill the place. We want his presence to make a difference. We want to see you come in one way but leave different. Not because you met Pastor Mark, but because you met God. Hallelujah. Not because you met the pastor, but because you met the master. Y'all not saying nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, Amen. I can help you a little bit, but he is our help. Yes. If he don't help me, I sure enough can't help y'all. Y'all not saying nothing. Yes, Manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth. And that's what I'm talking about today. That the word nine means accomplishing the divine will. So it says, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth, just as it is in heaven. So God has placed all of us here for a reason. He's placed us all here for a purpose. And he's given us all a, a DNA, and we're like no one else. No matter if you're, if you're a twin or a triplet, everybody has different fingerprints. Yeah. So there's things that God has placed you to be here on earth to do. And that's what we want to do. We want to fulfill God's plan and purpose in the earth. Say, in the earth. In the earth. Verse 10 again says, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth, just as it is, as it is fulfilled in heaven. We acknowledge you as our provider. How many people know that God is your provider? Yes, thank you. He's our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. He's the Lord who provides. And he'll provide a job. He'll provide a business. He'll provide a car. Yeah. He'll provide. Well, he's our provider. No matter what you need. And sometimes it seems like it's not happening too quick. But you got to confess with your mouth. He's my provider. He's my healer. He'll provide healing. Yes, right. He'll provide strength. Yes, right. He'll provide patience. Y'all not saying nothing. Yeah. Say, he's my Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He will provide whatever I need. He will provide whatever I need. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise. Yes, it says, we acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. The word says, give us this day our daily bread. Verse 12, listen to this. It says, forgive us the wrongs we have done. We do wrong stuff, y'all. We all do, myself included. Forgive us the wrongs we have done. And don't be praying no prayers. Lord, if I did something, Lord, you know you're going to mess up. <laughs> You know you don't cuss somebody out. Y'all know say you know you look crazy at somebody. Lord, if I did anything, you uh -uh, Lord, forgive me, because I know my tail messed up. That's right. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you don't have to say that. Sometimes you can look at something. Sometimes you can partake of something. Y'all quiet. I must be stepping on so that I can't get no good at that. So we, we have to continue to ask God, Lord, wash me. Cleanse me, yeah. purify me, sanctify yeah. me right. in your blood, in your word. Forget my thoughts, oh, right. my racist yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you need God to forgive you just with your family, because sometimes your family works your nerve. <laughs> at the cross, at the cross. All right, forgive us the wrongs we have done. 
As we ourselves release forgiveness of those who have wronged us. You can't just forgive, ask God to forgive you. You gotta forgive people that wrong you. You hold them bitterness and grudges and unforgiveness, and you you don't you don't forgive you you hold an unforgiveness from Pookie had a cookout from 1950. Pookie don't went on to be the Lord, and you said, I ain't going to the family reunion because what Pookie said in 1950. He don't go. Well, what did he say? I don't even know, but I know he made me mad. Let that mess go. <laughs> Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness of those who have wronged us. Yes. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Verse 14, and when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others. So that your Father in Heaven will also forgive you. Let, let me tell you something. I believe this, and I, I'm one that always. I'm not saying I'm hasty, but with the help of Lord, I'm striving to do better. You always want to keep your heart pure. Amen. David said, "Created me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me." So if David said, "Created me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me." That means we can have a wrong spirit. Come on, true that. So daily, we want God to create us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us. And it's a daily walk. It ain't like I pray this Sunday and I ain't got to pray no more until next Sunday. You got to pray all day long. <laughs> Verse 14 says, and when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. Yeah. But if you withhold forgiveness from others, your Father withholds forgiveness from you. So that we want to always be people that forgive people. Amen. That sometimes people hurt us and, and do us wrong, or and, and, and you know, I'm not saying that you got to take in a red lobster for lunch, but make sure you get all that stuff out your heart. Yes. Make sure you get all that bitterness out. And, and, and if God wants you to forgive, He He will help you. He wants you to do it. He'll help you. You can't say I can. You can't do it on your own. You sometimes you got to say, God, I went through this, 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 and this. Maybe you had a bad marriage, bad relationship, whatever the case may be. Father left, mother left, whatever it is, you gotta let that stuff go. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. Look, people don't went on, they enjoying their life, and you be stuck holding the baggage. And they ain't even thinking about you. Amen. So I'm trying to set you free. So number nine, the, the number nine of means number one is to accomplish the divine will. And I wrote here, we need to get rid of anything and everything that keeps us from accomplishing God's will for our life. God's will needs to be number one. Amen. Everything else needs to be secondary. God's will needs to be number one in all of our lives. Amen. And if it's not number one, we need to make some adjustments. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. To, make to make adjustments that I may accomplish, I may accomplish the, divine the divine will of God for my life. For my life. Don't be so fixed on what other people do. What is God telling you to do? Yeah. What is God, what areas is God telling you to work on? Yeah, let's do it. Amen. True that, true that. Don't worry about somebody else's tongue. Make sure you tame your own tongue. <laughs> All right, number two, we get one more and let you go. Number two. Uh, number two also means the perfect movement of God. The perfect movement of God. Say the perfect. Perfect. Movement of God. Movement. movement is the act or process of moving, especially change or place or position of, or posture. A tactical or strategic shifting. We must stay open to the perfect movement of God in every area of our life. Whenever God wants to shift us and move us and do new things in our life, we as believers need to always stay open to his voice. My sheep know my voice and the voice of the stranger will follow. If God's trying to shift you or move you, he knows what's best for you. He's trying to pull something out of you. Amen. He's trying to get you from where you've been to a new place in him. Because you will have gifts, talents, abilities, ministries, and he wants to bring them out. So he wants to bring them out. Whatever God shifts you, it's always to better you. Say, whatever God shifts me, God shifts me. It's, always it's always to better me. How many of you have children and grandchildren here? Don't you want the best for your family? Yes. So if we be natural evil not to give good gifts to our children, how much more does our Heavenly Father want to give good gifts to us? So whenever God shifts you, he, oh, I wish 
Pastor Mark, he was here last night. He was saying how everything that I shared last night was just such a confirmation. And he was praying those same prayers. Uh, when he came last night, I, I told him, I said, I wish you would have said something, but I'll tell you to say it when you come back. But that, I said, that's a confirmation to know. When you come here, Sabrina comes to me and says, you was in my business again. <laughs> you was all in my Let me tell you something. That's a prophetic confirmation to let you know you're right where you're supposed to be. When God speaks to you, your help, you're better, you're stretched, you grow. That's a confirmation. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm where I should be. I'm not stuck. Amen. I was working with Stephanie over the phone last week. I was like, no, nah, this ain't quite what I like. He said, no. I said, I want it to pop. I said, when I do this to fly, I want it to pop. And it stretched her into finding something to that help stretch for, for her, her business. Amen. For what she does. But if you just settle for anything, it's like, oh, that's, that's fine. But you know, let me tell you something. When you have a spirit of excellence, you know what you like. You know the level of what you like. And it has to be stretched. As leaders, stretch yourself in your ministries. Stretch yourself in your teaching and study. Stretch yourself so you can give God the best. I was up like about 4, 4.30, just going over stuff. You know that I was ready, going over some more scriptures and stuff to better feed you. Amen. Amen. And then to better bless you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Habakkuk 2 and 3. I love that. It says, uh, For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It surely will come. It will not delay. Say it will not delay. Not delay. The perfect movement. We want the perfect movement of God in our lives. We want the perfect movement of God in our ministries. We want the perfect movement of God in a, God moving my life the way you want to move. And whatever, you know, and, and we have to be pliable. I wrote here, we must uh, be open and ready and apt to change. Sometimes we don't get breakthrough because we won't move. Wow. Sometimes we won't get changed because we won't, we won't move. We won't grow. We won't go and see something better. We won't go and see something different. Hallelujah. We must be open to the perfect movement of God in every area of our life. And, and, and that still goes in line with accomplishing the will of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We should want the best for our life. When Jesus Christ died, when God gave Jesus, he gave us his best. So we should be given our best. Amen? Amen. Last one, I, I got to read this patience. I want y'all to really deal with this patience. Amen? That patience was good last night. I was thinking about patience as I was, as that's another word that uh, number nine means patience. Everybody say patience. patience. I'm going to go to James 1 and 4. James 1 and 4. Y'all will join us? Yes. 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 Amen. James 1, and, James 1 and 1 from the King James Version. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. My brother, account it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, yeah. knowing this. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Yes, it is. From the Passion Translation, it says, Greetings, my name is Jacob, and I'm a love slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I write unto all the twelve tribes of Israel who have been sown as seeds among the nations. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, anybody ever been there? See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. Let me read that again, all my leaders. Listen to this. From the Passion Translation, verse 2, it says, My fellow believers. How many fellow believers are here today? All right, I'm going to make sure I have the right crew. I don't want to be talking to fellow unbelievers. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to, to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. Listen to this. And then, say and then. Amen. As your endurance or patience grows even stronger, it will release protection. Perfection, I'm sorry. It will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Wow. That's a good name of the Lord. As Pastor Faith said, that mess is good, ain't it? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm going to close it down and read it one more time. 
My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, there's times in all of our lives where it seems like we're facing nothing but difficulties or nothing but challenges or nothing but closed doors or nothing but no's or nothing we're not hiring or nothing we don't have a place. Y'all not saying nothing. No, no, no. In all of our lives, no matter how good we look today, my fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity. See, that's an opportunity. You're like an opportunity, my foot. Get me out of this mess. See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, all of our faith gets tested. You say, oh, the Lord doing this in my life. Hallelujah. Testify. And it's okay, I'm going to see what you're going to do when I throw this on you. When you get hit with that, what's going to happen? That's right. That's right. That's right. What you going to do, Pastor Faye? You worldwide 2018 prayer summit. Every come one, come all. Every nation, prayer for everybody. Prayer for your sons. Prayer for your daughters. Prayer for the kids. Prayer for this. You think he's going to take it and say, take that for prayer. Let's keep throwing back. So you better take it as a prophetic act. When the devil throws stuff at you, you better throw it back. Throw it back with prayer. Throw it back with energy. Throw it back. But everybody that gets stuff full, don't throw it back. They keep it. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Like you, don't, like you don't even know the power of prayer. Come on now. When the devil throws something at you, everybody throw it back. Y'all hold on. What am I going to do? How am I going to make it? You serve a God that's bigger than you. You serve with the great I am. You said the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. What do you think you're going to just testify when nothing's going? When, you, when nothing's going? And oh, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Play the praise music. Play the tambourine. Let's dance. But can you be like David in Psalm 34 and 1? It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise, check it till they get in my mouth. I don't care what the doctor's report says. I shall believe the report of the Lord. I don't care how you come against my kids. I put my hands, hands in the, in the, my kids in the hands of the Lord. And because Jesus never slumber on those kids, I'm going to bed. I'm not staying up all night worrying. What kind of God do you serve? We always say, now unto him is able to do exceeding abundantly above all the look at that snake our man with the power that works in us. Yeah, but when the hell hounds out, what you say then? Thank you for your words. Amen. What you gonna do when the devil throws something at you? You throw it back. No hesitation. No hesitation. Hallelujah. That's right, get it in your spirit. That's a message right there. When the devil throws something at you, throw it back. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs a power within you to endure all things. And then as you... As your, as your endurance or patience grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being. Perfection. He perfects those things that concerns us until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. I'm going to close out with patience, give you something to, to, to chew on, and we're going to have communion to go to the house. Amen. The definition of patience, I was very convicted by the definition of patience. Because you always hear people talk about patience. Oh, you need to have patience. You need to have more patience. Well, what is patience? You want to know? I'm going to tell you. Amen. Say he finna tell us. I'm gonna go country. Say he finna tell us. <laughs> finna. <laughs> when I lived in Texas, I said, Ooh. when I lived in Houston, Texas, I said, these people are country. <laughs> you better tell my mother we finna. She'd be like, you, you better not be saying no country finna. To. Let me leave that F alone if I say the wrong thing up in here. Let me. We finna. Patience is the, listen to this y'all, this is going to challenge all y'all this week. This is going to challenge you and it's going to stretch you all this week. Patience. The definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And the MSB definition, which is the Mark S. Bryant definition translation, says, I put or without murmuring and complaining. Oh, Lord. Amen. 
Let me say it again. Patience. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset or without murmuring and complaining, uh, having the right attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the wrong thing is coming your way, what are you saying? Proverbs says death and life is in the power of your tongue. What are you saying? Are you walking in patience or are you walking in flesh? And I wrote up here, we talk too much. Yes. We have a we will murmur and come, I don't know why that. I know. I don't know why it's going on. What's going on with y'all? Thank God you got a job. My husband, my husband, my wife, they get on my Thank God you got a husband and wife. Somebody would love to have a husband and wife that you have. These kids getting on my nerves. Somebody, there's a mother or a woman out here that can't bear children. She would love to have children. Then you murmur, I'm sick of this house. I'm tired of cleaning this house. Thank God you got a house. All the people in your PlayStation would love to have a house. But we murmur and complain. You got people waiting for husbands for years and years and years. They're not even enjoying it because they're waiting for a husband or waiting for a wife. Be grateful for what you have. Keep your blessings up. If God bless you with a car, keep it clean. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hey, now, let's give God a praise. I'm through. Hallelujah. I'm done. Thank you, Facebook family. We love you and God bless. Let's give God a shout of praise.